Hello, hello. Good evening. My name is Heike Dempster. I'm the Director of Engagement and Outreach at Young Arts. My name, my pronouns are she, her. And the Young Arts Campus is situated on traditional homeland of Native nations, including the Tecesta, the Calusa, the Taino, and today the Mekusuki and the Seminole. We are pay our respects to the elders past, present, and future, and recognize their continued existence and contributions to our community. Thank you all for joining us to this info session dedicated to educators. Young Arts identifies exceptional young artists, amplifies their potential, and invests in their lifelong creative freedom. The competition is, of course, open to all artists age 15 to 18 or grades 10 to 12. And the, this, the Young Arts journey really starts with the competition and the application process. Um, before we begin the session, I wanted to have a few housekeeping notes. Uh, the info session is being recorded. So if you want to protect your privacy, please change your uh, name to first name only. And you can always ask questions by using the chat or by raising your hand. We will be answering all of those questions. Um, I'm one of your contacts at Young Arts. My name is Heike Dempster, as I said, and I will be um, putting my email address in the chat shortly. And you can contact me if you want to request as in school or in program uh, presentation about the competition. For example, we work with a wonderful team of alumni who provide presentations and outreach across the country. It is now my pleasure to welcome my colleague Nidra Ward, Associate Director of Winner Programs at Young Arts, and also Chris Trabara, one of our valued members of our presentation team and the 2016 Young Arts winner in film. So I pass it off to Nidra and Christy. Thank you so much again for joining us. Hi, everyone. My name is Christy Trabada. I go by she, they pronouns. I am a 2016 winner of film, as Heike mentioned. I'm also a professional filmmaker based in Miami, Florida. I own two film production companies here, and I actually started making films when I was 15 years old. I was in a film program at uh, my public high school, and Young Arts definitely changed my life and really helped shape who I am as an artist and has continued to provide that support for me. So I would love to talk to you guys about my experience as a winner, my experience as an alumni, because in my opinion, I think Young Arts really kicks in after, you know, a student graduates from high school, because it, again, we do provide that lifetime career support. So I'm very excited to break into, you know, all of the details when it comes to that. And also kind of it in inform you on different educator resources that we offer. As Heike mentioned, uh, we do presentations. I'm a part of that outreach program. So if you would like to book a presentation for your classes, we'd be happy to do that. We also provide digital toolkits. Uh, we could print a collateral and send it to your program upon request. We have newsletters that you can follow, several events um, in Miami that you can attend as well. And we do presentations for, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, formal high schools. We do after school programs or tutoring programs, youth groups, um, all different types of programs. And so, yeah, so that's, that's me. <laughs> and I'll go ahead and pass it on to Nidra to kind of give you that general application info. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Nidra Ward. I am the Associate Director of Artistic Programs here at Young Arts. Um, I go by she, her, and I am gonna give you just a brief description of what the application is uh, looking like for your students. So um, first off, to be eligible, they must be between the ages of 18 to 15 or in grades 10 through 12 on December 1st of this year. Um, they must also be either a citizen of the U.S., permanent resident of the U.S., uh, or eligible to receive taxable income. So that basically means that they do have a social security number and can obtain income in order to apply. Um, the application is open currently and closes on October 13th. That is Friday, October 13th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern, and that's 8.59 p.m. Pacific. Um, this year, we have a new platform that the application is being housed on, and it is called Kaleidoscope. So to access the application, you would go to our website at youngarts.org. Um, the students would review the requirements that are uh, specified for their discipline and category that they wish to apply in. And from there, they can be taken to Kaleidoscope to fill out their application. Um, also, this year is a two-step process for applying. So you have their main application, which is basic contact information, education information, educator information that they wish to acknowledge, um, parent contact information. Um, and that is all part of the main application. 
and then they will be directed based on the disciplining category that they are selecting. They will be directed to upload, upload their media and answer any media questions um, to a separate part that is also within the same application portal. Um, so that is um, new this year. It is a different process. So if you have students who have applied in the past, they would have to create a new account on this Kaleidoscope platform. So just something to note. Um, there are, um, after the application closes, uh, the adjudication process starts immediately after. Um, it takes about a month and there are several different levels of the judging process. So it goes through several different sets of eyes um, before winners are determined. Um, and winners will be announced at the end of November of this year. So uh, all of that takes approximately about a month in order to uh, get through the full uh, adjudication process for all of the disciplines. Um, there are two award levels, uh, Young Arts winner, Award winners and Young Arts Award winner with distinction. Those who are uh, identified as winners with distinction are invited to participate in National Young Arts Week, which is being held in January um, in Miami, Florida. Um, and then winners of all levels are afforded uh, all types of different um, opportunities throughout their winning year and beyond. Um, so there are additional programs, uh, both virtual and in-person for all levels of winners in their current year. And then, um, you know, as Christy mentioned and Heike mentioned, it is beyond that. Um, so once you become a Young Arts winner, you have exclusivity to um, Young Arts Post, which is a platform exclusively for Young Arts winners. And that is where it's kind of like a Facebook page that only winners have access to. And you can go on there and find other opportunities that Young Arts provides. Um, there's micro grants, fellowships, uh, other awards um, that they can uh, register for, um, and just a, a lot of other opportunities that we uh, provide over the years of their career. Um, also on this platform, there's a blog. You can, if you are a Young Arts winner, you can post uh, other opportunities where you may want to collaborate with other winners. Um, and it's a 20,000 plus uh, group of alumni that have access to this platform. So um, the it's just a huge world that they are introduced to that they can um, find all of these great opportunities. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, oh, there is a $35 application fee for each application that they submit. Um, there are also fee waivers available and those are very simply just a letter stating that they um, need to have their fee waived and the wait, the wait, the application fee will automatically be waived the full $35. Um, and that also applies to any and all um, categories that they apply in. If they need their fee waived, they upload a letter and their fee is automatically waived. Um, another question that we often get is for schools who wish to apply to for a group uh, of their students. So if you have students, like say you have 10 students that the school would like to pay for um, their application fees, um, you can send an email to apply at youngarts.org mm -hmm. and send us a list of your students mm -hmm. so that we can provide them with a coupon code that would waive their fee in the application. And then your school would receive an invoice for the total amount of students who applied uh, under that code. Um, there is also um, FAQs on our website. Um, you can uh, send questions regarding requirements and so on to apply at youngarts.org as well. Um, all of the disciplines and the categories requirements are on our website. And you can also email us at apply at youngarts.org or send uh, DMs on social media to get any questions answered. Um, I am going to, I think, pass it back to Christy. Hello. Thank you all again for joining us, by the way. I, this evening, really, we really want to help provide you with all the resources and information that you can take back into your classrooms. And so for me, I just want to get into my young arts journey and what it was like being a winner and being an alumni. So it started for me, really, I did a lot of research about different scholarships and grants and I would dedicate my junior year, my junior, senior year of high school, I would dedicate an hour a week 
to just Google because I knew I needed it. And I ended up just cold calling a bunch of production companies that were local to my area. And I found one that took me in as an intern. I went in as an intern and they needed me to operate the camera for a young art show during Young Arts Miami week. And I'll go into what that amazing week is like for Young Arts winners. And so I was filming that show and the people in production company was like, hey, you're 17. They had no idea I was 17 year 17, you should apply to Young Arts. And so I was introduced to the Young Arts, you know, film discipline. And it was so amazing. So I applied, I won, and I got to have that amazing Young Arts Miami Week experience. So as Nidra mentioned, there are two different levels of winner. We have winner and then winner with distinction. So winner will, the winners will be able to have an opportunity to attend what's called our Young Arts Lab, which is around a three to five day program where they really do multidisciplinary work. They gather with a bunch of different disciplines and have master teachers and guest artists come in. And it's really a beautiful collaborative, you know, it, it's just kind of where they could play and have fun as artists and work with each other and build that community. Because that, that's another really big thing that Young Arts is providing is such a robust network of artists from all over the world all over the country, being able to come together and be a part of that Young Arts umbrella. And so, so something that I like to say with the kids, because, you know, if you say celebrities, their ears are going to perk up. Timothy Chalamet. There's a video on YouTube of Timothy Chalamet telling them why they should apply. And let me tell you, when I show it to the kids in the classroom, they go bananas. So Timothy Chalamet, <laughs> um, we have Viola Davis, Nicki Minaj, Kerry Washington, Taral Ava McCraney, all these amazing artists who have come out of Young Arts. So that's something that I just love to share uh, for the students so they can kind of see what their future holds if they really dedicate um, themselves to their passion in creating a career out of their art. And Young Arts is really there to help support that. And so when I did my Young Arts Miami week, it was like, okay, this is amazing. You know, I got my cash award. I spent a week long, um, you know, trip, all expenses paid to Miami. And really, oh, something I forgot to mention. So we have the winner that has the Young Arts Lab and then Winner with Distinction is allowed to go to Young Arts Miami Week. And so that is all intensive, focused on their discipline where they're really with masters in their craft and they really get to hone in and meet a whole bunch of friends that do what they do. And it's absolutely amazing. We have an awesome gala at the end of everything. They get to exhibit their work, you know, go to ex exhibitions and literally by the end of it, we're all crying because it was just such an amazing experience and we all grew so close together. So it's absolutely life changing. And then after that, you're a Young Arts alumni and you have access to Young Arts Post. And what's really amazing about Young Arts Post is that Young Arts gives out $32,000 every month in micro grants. And so that can go towards a you know creative development of a creative project that they have or uh, emergency funding if you know there's a natural disaster or something health related. So Young Arts really has your back. And alumni can apply for, I believe Nidra, correct me if I'm wrong, they can apply once a month and receive one grant a year. I know I always get my grant every year. I have apply all the time. I've gotten grants to help pay for camera equipment, for travel to uh, prestigious film festivals. I've received grant, just my most recent micro grant was for a documentary that I'm creating about femininity in Florida during these really changing times. And so that is just, to me, one of the biggest resources is being able to have that Young Arts post where you can reconnect with all your Young Arts winners, apply for those micro grants, apply for the uh, so many different opportunities for residencies, fellowships, job opportunities. There's job postings and many different partner organizations that will post onto Young Arts Post. And so one of the best things that I've received out of Young Arts Post is a free all expense paid trip to Sundance. It was absolutely fabulous staying in a gorgeous ski chalet, being treated like, you know, we are winning filmmakers. It, really amazing the partnership that Sundance has with, um, it, well, that Young Arts has with Sundance as part of their Ignite program. And so that absolutely changed my life. I was moving and shaking with the best of them. Young Arts has paid for my travel to go to Telluride Film Festival that completely changed my career and got me my manager. <laughs> it's just absolutely insane. Um, and so really Young Arts is that support system that they will always have. And so that's, I, I really love to stress that to them because this is not like any other competition that they're going to be doing while they're in school where they get a certificate and then, you know, it's over. It looks good on their resume for college. And there's really nothing they can do with after that. Young Arts is that name that they could have for the rest of their career, right? And then also it's a name that you guys could utilize as winning institutions. If you have students that win, you can request um, a certificate. I gave, there's, if you can correct me on the information with that, 
request a certificate. Um, I believe it is a plaque uh, now for that if your student applies with your name, because there is a section where they ask uh, if what a teacher has inspired them or helped them uh, throughout their process they could put your name down and you could be recognized as a winning educator, which is really amazing. Um, and yeah. also, yeah. So yeah, Heike could go more into the <laughs> resources. Yeah, that's correct. So you, every every educator can be recognized. So we offer certificates and plaques like Christy said, and we send an email out uh, early in the year to all the educators that are listed um, on the applicants, um, yeah, application. So on the winner's application in this case. So um, yeah, once that email goes out, you can fill out your address, et cetera, and then we get that to you. And if you have any questions on that as well, you can contact me. I put my email in the chat already. And also you are able to use the Young Arts name in marketing materials for your program as well. If you have winning students, you can receive that plaque like we mentioned. Um, also, if the student adds your name in the application, your name will be included in the anthology. Um, and also you can get have tickets to certain events during our Young Arts Miami week, which is really great. And yeah, again, like we said, we also do provide presentations, which in my opinion, I do press, I love to do presentations and it's really a great way to engage your students and I come in and I level with them in their energy. This is, you know, my style and really get them going. I have a whole song and dance <laughs> that I do to help them remember the website, youngodge.org, by the way. Applications do close on October 13th. So I just getting them really engaged, showing them videos, showing them, you know, the prestigious long history of Young Arts and how it could change their life. Um, and they're super fun. I love doing them. And I think the kids love them also. And it gets them inspired and motivated motivated throughout their day. Um, and especially when it comes to portfolio making for those visual art disciplines, they, they start getting like really excited, you know? And one tip, if I would actually just getting a little off topic, there's a, a tip that I give to like every student is if you, there is opportunity and resources out there for you as an artist and there are organizations willing to help you. So there's really nothing you could lose from applying. And something that I love to add on top of that is mentioning our student list service. So even in the act of just applying, of putting themselves out there, putting that portfolio together, and you know, just taking that first step, they could select a box that asks if they would like their application be submitted to the student list service. And it'll be submitted into a database where prestigious inst higher education institutions from all over the nation have access to their applications. And so that is, absolutely amazing in terms of recruitment for those institutions. We're also known during, you know, our young arts shows and events. We have recruiters from amazing schools like Juilliard and Berkeley and NYU that come to our events and, you know, scout. <laughs> so this is, we are very well connected within the higher education space. So definitely just by applying, students can take advantage of that. And really, I, I like to think of it as like, hey, you're going to apply and I don't want you to get caught up in the self-doubt of whether or not you're going to win. It's you have already made that step. You've committed. I want to make a career in my art form. So I'm going to take the time to write those personal artist statements, be able to articulate who I am as an artist and express it in this application. So really just the act of doing the application is them taking the next step forward in their career and affirming to themselves, this is what I want to do. And this is what I want to create a career out of. So that's my tidbit. Um, also that writing discipline, you know, when I talk to kids, I'm like, listen, if you were inspired one day and you wrote a couple poems, you could submit those poems, just make sure they're you know, well formatted and have good spelling and grammar. And that's a very easy application they could apply to on top of whatever other disciplines they can apply to. So they also can apply to multiple disciplines at once. Just be aware in Kaleidoscope that holds all your applications. So they have for each discipline, it's a separate application. And for the fee waivers, they would have to upload that fee waiver into each application. That's how it works uh, now still, Nidra, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay, cool. So it's not it's something to keep in mind. But yeah, so that if you we have any other questions I, I, to go deeper into anything, please let me know. Uh, but absolutely, Young Arts changed my life. And I being now, I actually have gone on to not only being a presenter, I'm a, the film discipline coordinator from last year and this season. So I've really gotten an opportunity to see the nitty gritty of how you know, adjudications happens and being able to participate in Young Arts Week is absolutely such a blessing. And being a part of this organization, 
I just, I could get emotional about it, but it's very, very amazing. Yes. So yeah, go ahead and uh, either raise your hand or drop questions in the chat. There were a few that came in while we were talking, so I will go to those. Um, uh, the email address again uh, for any questions. And if you um, are uh, a school that wants to pay for your students, it would be apply at youngarts.org. I dropped that in the chat as well. Um, where can we find instructions on how to upload documents and how to save it under? So depending on the discipline and category that your students are applying in, please have them review those requirements specifically because it does have um, you know, how to format a writing piece if they are applying in writing or if they are applying in photography, how to format their pictures, if they are applying with videos, uh, how to format the videos. Um, so please make sure that they do review those requirements very, very carefully. Um, there is, as far as like video or image formats, um, the platform accepts all, all pretty much every format. So you don't have to worry about uh, converting it to another file type if if they're um, if they have it in one or the other. Um, what is the application cost? So it is thirty five dollars per application. So if they are applying in multiple disciplines categories, it would be thirty five dollars for each. And again, there are fee waivers available for those who are in need. It's just a letter that they have to upload into each of the applications that they're applying in, and it'll waive their fee automatically. Um, does every submission require 10 works? So again, that depends on the discipline and category. I assume you're referring to either visual arts, photography, or design, um, and that all three of those disciplines include a portfolio of at least 10. Um, if they're applying in visual arts, it's at least eight pieces of work um, and 10 images. So those last two can be detailed works, um, detailed pictures of their pieces. Um, photography is 10, 10 images um, and design is at least two projects, but it's still 10 images for, the, for those three. Um, if we want to present to our class, is it through Zoom like this? How do we set that up? Well, you can definitely send an email. I think Heike put it in the chat um, to request a presentation. And depending on where you're located, we have different presenters that are assigned to different states. Um, so for for example, I do in-person presentations if they're close to me, if they're in the South Florida area. But uh, most of the time, if I'm presenting to my other states or in North Florida or Central Florida, I do them over Zoom. Um, if they are applying for dance, just confirming they can apply for two areas such as modern or and choreography. Yes. So again, you can apply in as many discipline categories as you'd like. Um, there is the $35 fee for each. Um, should the portfolio be all one series or no for photography? So again, review those photography requirements because it can either be a series of five in, in two different series or a series of 10. Um, the requirements are on our website, um, so youngarts.org, and then you would click to uh, get to the discipline that you are looking for your requirements, select the discipline. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if there are any other questions, again, you can also feel free to raise your hand mm -hmm. if you'd prefer to ask a more conversational question. Um, I see one here that says, how many disciplines can they apply to? Yeah, as, as many as you'd like. Yeah. Just be aware to upload if they're uploading a fee waiver each application. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, for dance, as you can choose multiple styles, will it be two different applications? So it's all in one application, but you would have to upload media for each of the requirements uh, specified for the category that you're applying in. So modern has a different set of requirements than choreography, but it would all be in the same application. It would just be um, the full specs of each of those requirements that you would have to fill. Um. Is there a tutorial to demonstrate the application process? So not at the moment. Um, it is very straightforward and very self-explanatory. It literally takes you step by step. And if you miss a part, it 
it will not allow you to to submit your application. It will automatically take you back to any questions or media that you missed um, uploading. So um, it's really, really straightforward and, and very detailed um, and leaves uh, very little room for missing anything. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so the photography requirements were just dropped into the chat, but, um, it, it is a page on, on the website. Uh, yes, Cheryl. Yeah, I was just saying, I didn't see the email for, um, Christy for doing the presentation. Is it a specifically to your email, Christy? Uh, no, actually it will go be to, Heike, what's, what is the email that they should send it to? Would it be yeah, put it in the chat. I mean, put it again just in case. It's probably gone under under all these messages. I'm putting it right now. Okay, thank you. Of course. Just curious, Cheryl, what state are you located in? Your school? I'm in California, Northern California, up by Mount Shasta. Okay, cool. So that's uh that's Thurman's territory. Thurman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will connect you to Thurman tomorrow if you email me, Cheryl. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Of course. So email uh, H Dempster. H Dempster. Okay, got some more questions. Vocal submissions are the audio or video. So again, this is in the requirements. Yes, it is video for uh for all of the voice categories. Um, are there any suggestions on preparing work for visual arts? So also on our website, on the discipline spe specific pages, there are tips from the judges. So please make sure that your students review those pages, review the requirements, um, and, and also check out those tips from, uh, from the judges. There's also a discipline specific info sessions on our YouTube page. So if you have specific questions um, that may pertain to a certain discipline, please check out our YouTube page for the info sessions that pertain to those uh, specifics. Um, are there writing requirements on the website? Yes, all of the requirements are on our website. Um, so please make sure to visit youngarts.org to uh, select the discipline that you wish to see those, those requirements. Um, are the 10 images for your photography two separate cohesive bodies of work, five each? Again, please make sure you review those requirements because it can be two sets of five or a whole series of 10. So it is up to the applicant whether or not they have the series to make a portfolio of 10 uh, full cohesive ideas or two separate uh, as five each. But yes, it would be five and five or 10. Um, is this an independent competition and application process or does your teacher or school need to recommend you? So no, we do not need recommendations from schools. It is an independent uh, competition application. Um, so you can help your student, absolutely, if you wish to help them apply, um, but it is, their, it is their application and we do not require um, reference letters or recommendation letters from schools at all. This is a solely art-based uh, competition and we do not um, consider like grade point average or any of those other things um, to be considered for, for the competition. Uh, can multiple students working on the same project apply for the same discipline? So this is a solo competition. So you wanna make sure that they are the sole creators of the work. Um, that they are submitting to the competition. Uh, Cheryl. Hi again. So I have a student who will be 18 in October, a senior, and there's another um, program she was going to apply for, but they were wanting to get um, an email from her parent and she's not wanting to involve her parent and she'll be 18 in October. How do you guys handle that? Do you have a requirement where they need parent, you know, parental permission? And is that waived if they're 18? Is there anything like that that I have to worry about? Oh, well, our parent contact uh, page within the application is really just for those parents who, who want to be involved and for the applicant who want their parents involved. And it's just basically when we send out information like the the notification that they won or if the if there are opportunities like attending the Young Arts Lab 
or any of those things, we copy parents on all of that stuff. So if the if the student is 18 and they do not wish to have their parent involved, it is a required field. So they can just put their own email address again so that we we know that they they would prefer not to have a parent involved. That's totally fine. And if they're um, not quite 18 by the time it's time to get that um, application in, though, is that still OK? They're, they're going to yeah. be 18 in October, but I don't know if it's before the deadline. That's totally fine. That's totally fine. Yeah. Okay. So uh, it is for, we, we do the adjudication process for the year prior. So this is going to be 2024 winners for this current competition. So if they're 18, by the time we have all of these opportunities, that's totally fine. And they can just put their own email address. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Um. So could each applicant apply for two different categories? So again, an applicant can apply in as many disciplines and categories as they'd like. Um, they would just have to follow the specific requirements uh, and guidelines for whatever they wish to apply in. Peter, we have a question here about presidential scholar that, uh, that I forgot to mention that with you as presidential scholar of the arts. Sure, so presidential scholars in the arts, um, Young Arts is the sole nominating agency for that program. Um, it is uh, determined during Young Arts Week in January. So the student must be named a winner with distinction and participate in National Young Arts Week in order to be considered. Um, from Young Arts Week, uh, they are nominating a total of 60 uh, candidates across all 10 disciplines. Um, and from there, uh, the Department of Education gets from those 60, 20 winners uh, of presidential scholars in the arts. There is a total, so there's also academic presidential scholars, and those uh, plus R20 totals 161 um, uh, um, winners for presidential scholars each year. Um, if they are eligible, which means that they are either a U.S. citizen or permanent resident, and they are a senior graduating between January and August of the next year, um, and they have a GPA of 3.25 or higher. So I know I had said before that we don't consider GPA, but actually the Department of Education does. And so they have to further apply with them in order to be um, nominated or be named a winner for presidential scholars. Um, and so all of that is done with the panel during uh, Young Arts Week. So they would have had to participate in that. Um, also, if they are participating in Young Arts Week as an underclassman, as a junior, as a sophomore, um, they are considered once they do turn uh, to be a graduating senior. So say, for example, you have a student who is a junior this year, they participate in National Young Arts Week next year when they are graduating, we will reach out to them for further uh, uh, further consideration to presidential scholars. So even if they win and they come to Young Arts Week as an underclassman, they are still considered during their senior year for presidential scholars. Um, and that uh, consists of um, really submitting to the judges updated media per the current year's requirements and also answering some essay questions um, that, that would have been asked during Young Arts Week anyway in an interview process. So uh, yeah, we do make sure that even if they participate as an underclassman, they are considered during their senior year. And to be clear, the students who will be par participating in National Young Arts Week, they are the winners with distinction. I think I got through, unless Christy, you see something that I missed. I think I kind of got through everything here. Um, oh, Cheryl, yeah. Do kids under 18 need a chaperone to go to Miami? No, they do not. Um, so we uh, provide chaperones for all participants, regardless of age. So even those who are 18 will still receive chaperoning <laughs> during the program. Um, but we do have um, parent room blocks. So if a parent does choose to come with their um, child to Young Arts Week, that's totally fine they should know that they are on their own <laughs> because the students are participating in things from morning until night every single day. So all of that is close to the public. We are in our own little bubble here in Miami when, when these programs are happening. 
Um, but a parent can choose to come with them if they prefer, but it's not required as a chaperone. Um, there will be 60 winners with distinction. No, so there are there are uh, approximately 150 winners with distinction each year, but of those 60 who are graduating seniors can be nominated to Presidential Scholars in the Arts. So uh, the winners with distinction is typically around 100, 150 across all 10 disciplines. Um, and then the Young Arts winners, uh, not with distinction, are unlimited. So there is no cap on those uh, levels of winners. It's just the winners with distinctions that have a little bit of a cap on them. Um, uh, what are the other levels? So we just explained that it is Young Arts winner and Young Arts winner with distinction. And the winners with distinction are invited to participate in Young Arts Week. Um, and we just answered the chaperone question. So they do not need a chaperone. Um, and just explain those numbers. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, again, if there are any other questions, feel free. How many students apply each year? Great. So, um, the past few years, we've had around 7,000 applications. Um, those vary, uh, obviously we have 10 disciplines, so those vary between disciplines. Um, but yes, we, in the past few years, we've had approximately 7,000. Uh, is there a songwriting category? Yes, there is. That is under the voice discipline um, and it's called singer songwriter. And all you need to do in order to access these requirements is go to youngarts.org and then click apply to young arts and all the disciplines will be listed. This is nationwide. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so just to go over the award levels again, it's Young Arts winner and Young Arts winner with distinction. There is no uh, cap on the Young Arts winners, but there are caps on the Young Arts winners with distinction who are invited to participate in National Young Arts Week. Um, so it varies depending on the discipline, but it's usually approximately anywhere from around seven to eight to up to 20 in each of those disciplines. Um, and that's where we come up with the, usually it's around 150 winners with distinction that participate in Young Arts Week. Oh, and we didn't break down the cash awards for both those levels. So uh, Young Arts winners receive $250 and then Young Arts winner with distinction, uh, those levels are determined during Young Arts Week um, and they can win anywhere from $1,000 to $10,000 uh, at the culmination of that week. So this is being recorded and will be shared um, afterwards and also will be posted to our YouTube channel. So you'll be able to access this after um, after this comes to a close. Our YouTube channel is a really amazing resource for videos to show to your, uh, to your in your classroom and to your students as well. I definitely, during my presentations, we have an amazing new uh, about video that just came out by Doug Blush, a fantastic uh, master teacher that uh, works with Young Arts for many, many years. And so that video will literally give them the entire just scope and depth and breadth of Young Arts. <laughs> So I definitely recommend checking that out and showing your students. This is a great question. Is the cash award a scholarship or just an award? So it is a cash award. It is not tied to um, being used for education in any way. Uh, it is a monetary award that is cash in their pocket and they can use it however they'd like. And also, again, if any questions come to you after this, um, you know, you think of something after this session comes to an end, um, feel free to send questions to apply at youngarts.org. Um, this is also where your students can send questions if they have specific requirement questions. Um, and we have a team that is able to answer all of those specific questions for those disciplines and categories.
you, Cheryl, for great Thank questions. <laughs> I want to give a couple more minutes just in case there are other questions, but happy to give back your time if there aren't any others. Thank you all so much for being here and joining us tonight and supporting your students. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>